All right, back by popular demand. We got the cutlass back over here. And uh, I was, I had forgotten. It's been a while since I'd messed with this thing. I brought it home and cleaned it up a little bit. I still need to hook up the AC. Uh, there's no lines even hooked up to the compressor. I have them. I just need to to uh, probably gonna have to bend them up to get them to fit uh, uh, the uh, accumulator and all that stuff. But uh, another thing I'm gonna do with this is I'm gonna go ahead and convert to E85 flex fuel. You know that on doing that on this is extremely easy. I'd probably do it in an hour. I mean, it's just a matter of splicing in the sensor and then repinning the uh, PCM connector. Super easy. I don't know why I didn't do it before. I guess I thought E85 conversions were a lot more uh, involved. This one has the PTFE fuel lines from the sending unit at the rear to the engine, so there won't be any corrosion problems or anything like that. So I'm definitely going to go ahead and do that. No reason not to. Okay, well that brings me to our next... Uh, our next sub project I guess of the bigger project uh, we're going to be upgrading the fuel system in the truck because we planned on doing a supercharger haven't quite decided whether I want to do the Whipple or the Pro Charger but it's going to be one or the other I know each of them have their pros and cons and at this point after doing a lot of research I'm not sure it makes any difference I think it's just a matter of personal preference leaning towards the Whipple but then again I don't know, you know the Pro Charger thing gets a lot of good reviews but I've already ordered all the parts to upgrade the uh, fuel system before we even order the uh, supercharger so I'm not going to play the game where you go down and you have it charged I mean uh, charged tuned on uh, you know regular gas and then go back and do the 885 I'm going to do it all at one time um, where all this stuff here, I think, yeah, this is the LT4 high pressure fuel pump. There's the part number right there. Make darn sure you, you know, if you're going to do something like this, this will work for turbocharged power, supercharged. I mean, this is applicable to lots of vehicles, not just this truck, but make sure you get the right part number. I mean, I think there is an HPM 1035 also, so... You know, it looks the same when you take it out of the box. Of course, it's not going to be. It's going to, I think it was the, I can't remember if they call it the low pressure pump or the mid pressure or whatever, but here she is. I'll go ahead and film the little markings on it because I did notice, I did a lot of research on the internet. If you come up with one that has the, uh, what is it, D0220F. I think you're in good shape if you see that mark. Well, let's get another one on this side. There you go. Right there. It's got the part number on it. Just make sure this is a high volume or high pressure or high volume. I don't know what it said. I did a lot of research and made sure I was getting the right one. I couldn't really find any definitive answers on any of the forums whether it was the right one or not. But after doing some research on the couple of the GM part sites and stuff I was able to kind of narrow it down so that takes care of the high pressure pump and now of course we got LT4 injectors eight of those there's the part number on on those lots there's a oh god what's it is it tactical garage he has a good video on how on upgrading these so you know I'm not gonna make another video on how to put injectors in I think people probably figure that out but uh, okay, that takes care of our our high pressure side. Move this stuff out of the way. But we're still going to need some type of uh, auxiliary or lift pump to supplement the factory uh, intake pump. I'm talking about the low side, and that's where all this mess of parts is going to come in. So I'm going to go over this uh, how I'm going to configure it. All right, here's our our pile of parts, some new, some old, and we've got some PTFE uh, 3 8 line over here. And here's kind of drawing it out. I'm going to splice in a little video that just kind of shows how the stock uh, lines are currently run. I crawled under the truck and made a little video, so I'll splice that in, but uh, here's how we're going to do this. 
we're going to, this is a stock uh, black plastic line that runs from the, the sender on top of the tank to the area where we currently have our E85 sensor spliced in. So you can picture the frame rail running uh, through here and you know our E85 up at the top part of the front of the tank here. But what we're going to do is we're going to remove all that E85 sensor stuff. Car go by. The, the E85 sensor, we're going to move it. There's a ABS sensor uh, in between the tank and uh, this uh, fuel pressure sensor. It's in the factory line, but it's, it's about right here somewhere. So we're going to move this E85 sensor to the other side of the uh, ABS module. Uh, basically in the same spot where the uh, fuel pressure sensor is, the factory fuel pressure sensor is spliced into that steel line. So we're going to just, basically what we're going to do is we're going to take one of these these hose barbs, or quick connects, whatever you want to, they're not hose barbs, or quick connects. We're going to connect that to the factory line. That'll convert it, the factory line, into a 6AN type uh, fitting. And then we're just going to run all new uh, PTFE hose all the way from, you know, the, that black plastic line all the way back to the engine. But along the way, we're going to have some stuff spliced in, like the uh, fuel sensor and the flex fuel sensor. This will make a whole lot more sense once I'm on the truck. It's kind of hard to, to explain it, but it's, it's really just a very simple thing. Just picture a line, a uh, braided steel line going all the way back to the engine with this spliced in, with the uh, fuel pressure sensor spliced in and the flex fuel sensor which will, like I said, be moved to the other side of the ABS module. There just isn't enough room for what I have planned uh, to mount to the, to the fuel rail in between the tank and the ABS module. So let me lay it out here on this blanket so you can kind of see, get visualized what I'm going to do. All right, let's quickly recap how the uh, stock fuel lines are laid out and how we... Uh, converted it to E85. All right, here's the front of the fuel tank. Um, obviously the frame rail's over here. We're on the driver's side. Here's the, the, the plastic fuel line that runs from the sender in the tank to one side of our E85 sensor. And that's through a 3 8 quick connect. The other side exits through a quick connect to 6AN type fitting. That's the black one on the, to the left of the blue and red coupler. And in the middle we have the blue and red coupler that connects to another adapter which in turn connects to the uh, factory steel fuel line. So with that in mind here's our gas tank again like I said. You've got this area in here on the frame rail which will be important later. Keep a middle note of that. Uh, the fuel line runs behind the ABS module and the next thing that comes up is this uh, fuel pressure sensor is tapped into that line. I've already unscrewed it. I think it's an eighth inch MPT type threaded fitting. And then the line continues up the transmission tunnel to the engine. So, and one thing I did notice, look how bent this line is right here. They didn't really do like a mandrel type bend. They just basically bent it, but it's really neck down right here as you can see. So it's not really good for flow. But anyway, just take a, uh, just remember how this is laid out so it'll make more sense when I go over the other stuff. Alright, here it is. I laid it all out. So, let's start with the, uh, I guess, the tank end. So what we'd have is that plastic factory fuel line that comes off the tank from the sender. That will be plugged into this GM Quick Connect, which in turn is converted to... A 6AN, which now we've got a 90 degree, I think a 90 to work, maybe a 45 will be better, I don't know. Anyway, it's going to connect uh, to that 6AN, and then uh, this will be connected with a piece of hose, obviously. I just don't have the hose cut. And then let's pretend that this is the flex fuel sensor. I don't want to pull it off the truck right now, but you remember that the flex fuel sensor will have two of those quick connect to 6AN fittings that will convert the... Uh, the quick connects to male 6AN, so it's going to be similar to that. So just picture that as being the sensor. This will plug in there. This is a what they call a 
I think it's a fuel gauge adapter, pressure adapter, I don't know. But anyway, what all it is is a uh, 6AN female on one side, a 6AN male on the other, and then there's it's tapped for an eighth inch NPT at the top. So just pretend this is our fuel pressure sensor, the one that uh, you know was tapped into that steel line. So that will be screwed in there. This line will plug in there. We're going to continue to the to the uh, the engine compartment where it will plug into the stock factory fuel line, which looks something like that, through one of those GM quick connects in another 90 degree fitting. So picture it just running back down, then back down the uh, uh, transmission tunnel. So that takes care of basically duplicating the uh, factory steel lines with uh, you know flexible braided uh, 3 8 fuel line. So next up, uh, now that that's taken care of, we have to figure out uh, how we're going to increase the uh, you know, where we're going to tap in the auxiliary pump, which I have. Alright, now to the fun part. This is going to be our little our fuel pump setup. Bosch 44 pump. Cheap eBay E85 compatible filter. And this bracket kit, which consists of these two brackets, these two 6AN fittings for the filter, and it also came with this fitting to for the output of the uh, pump to the input of the uh, fuel filter. Show you how that works. Kind of a nifty deal here. Okay, this thing, this little accessory kit they give you, it has a uh, 6AN male to male on it, uh, a banjo fitting with the banjo on one end and a 6AN male on the other, so this is two separate pieces. Uh, a couple of crush washers, which I don't like, that'll be replaced with copper ones, because I don't think these are really true crush washers. I think they're just I don't know, I think they're aluminum or something. And a uh, cap, which will probably be wind up being replaced with a steel one. I don't much care for the aluminum. But let me show you how that works. This output for this check valve in this uh, pump has a bunch of holes around the outside, and that's how the fuel uh, is discharged through those little holes. Well, they've come up with this banjo fitting, which slides over that and screws in up here on the filter. I didn't put the crush washer in, but the crush washer will go in, you know, first. I didn't put it in there. And then another crush washer will go on. And then you'll tighten this cap down. Now I'll tighten everything up, hopefully. So, fuel comes in up here through the check valve, out, and then, boom, back out the filter, back the same way it came in. So, remember, on the truck, we're going to reposition our flex fuel sensor and our fuel pressure sensor uh, to the right of the ABS module. So the ABS module is somewhere like right around in here. Then our gas tank's over here and we have frame rail that the lines run along. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our pump, make a bracket. We're going to mount that to the frame rail in between the ABS and the tank. There's a perfect spot in there. So, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> so right now we have a, something that looks similar to this going into our plastic stock line like we mentioned in the other video or earlier in the video comes in here what we're gonna do we're gonna splice our auxiliary fuel into here and we're gonna do that by disconnecting this and putting this in this is a T-fitting with the female or female on one side and male on the other we'll splice those in right there we're not gonna probably not gonna use this hose this is just one I had around and then that will screw in here so what you'll have is that fuel comes in. Now we have our auxiliary fuel when it cuts on, boom, it's helping. You know, it's giving it it's, uh, a booster supply of fuel. And of course our input's gonna have to be taken care of, so we're gonna use one of these. We're gonna drill the plastic tank. We're gonna thread this in, and then there'll be a hose connecting here to here. So fuel out of the tank, into the pump, through the check, into the fuel filter, boom, back out, supplying uh, the engine. Uh, oh, this pump will be controlled, will be uh, pressure controlled through this 
hob switch. And if you don't know what a hob switch is, it's basically just a pressure switch. This one's adjustable. You can pull this cap out. There's an Allen, uh, Allen key uh, pressure uh, control under here that you can adjust the pressure. I think this one's, is it 4 to 10 pounds? I don't know. But uh, in other words, we're going to, uh, well, how I'm going to do this one, I'm going to take that uh, little uh, uh, EVAP solenoid, purge solenoid, uh, delete plug that I, have, that I plugged in the manifold. I'm going to drill it, tap it, and then we're going to screw this in. And that'll be our pressure tap off the manifold to control this pump through a, uh, you know, just a regular Bosch style relay. This is a cheap Chinese knockoff. I'm not going to use it. I'm going to get a real Bosch um, relay. I think this socket's okay, but I just don't feel comfortable, uh, you know, using a cheap Chinese relay. I've used some other stuff they've never failed, but this is something more critical than, you know, just your fog lights coming on or whatever. <laughs> but, uh, that should do it. It's really not that hard. It's actually pretty simple. You know, I I didn't design this thing, obviously, but you have to kind of hunt around for parts to make this all work. There wasn't anything that uh, that you could just buy all together. And, it, and if you, there was, it's super expensive. I think I have maybe $200 in everything you see here. And I was looking at the fuel system. Man, they're just, I don't know. These people are asking a lot of money for these auxiliary pumps and you can you can apply this to uh, you know any type of vehicle a Corvette a Camaro anything it's not just a Silverado or Sierra type deal it's just an auxiliary fuel pump and I've never done this uh, you know I'm just going by what I what I saw on the internet and I, I was kind of freaked out by the fact that there's no regulator or anything in the system but apparently you know once that uh, you know once you go into boost that uh, you know, it starts drawing down on the factory system, and once this cuts in, um, you know, the sensor senses that, uh, you know, this is cut on, I guess, you know, the pressure's increased, so it basically it pulls back the factory pump, so it kind of evens, evens everything out. That's how I understand it. So we're going to see. But, uh, you know, for a little over, nah, I think it was under 200 bucks for all this stuff. You know, like I said, 100 of it was this pump. These pumps aren't cheap, but I wanted a real, genuine you know, Bosch pump. I didn't want to want a little cheap one. So, um, yeah, that's it. I guess the next thing I'll I'll uh, I'll go ahead and put just the factory lines in first. I won't even worry about this stuff right now. And I think I'll install all that stuff and drive around a while and just check it for leaks. And then we'll come up here and tap in and hook up the rest of it. But uh, let me get it. Let me get it put on the car and then we'll make another little video out of it.